Welcome to our show, Bar Mean Saturdays. And this way, I also decided to take a look at the Sandlot 3, or as it's properly known as, the Sandlot heading home. Um, I'm not sure why people decide to, you know, not number sequels properly. Maybe it's just to hide the embarrassment of having made, you know, more films in the series. Like, if I don't number them, they can't figure out how many I've made, unless they own all of them or look it up online. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of not numbering sequels. I have a sort of an OCD like about that, sort of like the nerd, I suppose. Like, if you're gonna make a sequel, put a number on it, okay? Like, I want it to be understandable, you know, when this film was made in chronological order with the rest of the films. It ends up being some sort of weird prequel thing, I'll know it was made fourth, right? Like with Tremors 4, it's actually a prequel film, so it comes before all the other films chronologically, you know, if you look at the timeline, but it was made fourth, therefore, you know, I wanted to be numbered that way. Um, uh, it's just one of those things that gets to me somewhat. I'll also admit that at least the, the third film here is a lot better than the Abomination that was the second. I mean, sure, the third one's generic, but the second one had no balls. Or I suppose the correct term in this context for the, the second film would be it had no rocks. Rocks being shorthand for ovaries. Yeah. Ugh. I've talked about the second one before, and I really don't want to talk about it again. But just seeing it on this box, you know, just distracts me. Like, I want to talk about how bad it is, but that's not the real focus of this video. But I can't help but point out how bad the second film is. Gosh darn it. <sighs> but the third one's a bit weird, because it sets itself up basically having um, Benny the Jet Rodriguez, who's now a manager because he had to stop playing the majors because of all of the work he had to have done to his legs, because I guess they went kaput after years of playing in the pros. Like He's just so hard on his legs running between those bases and stuff that his legs eventually just gave out and he had to have a major knee surgery, and that still wasn't enough to help him come back and play the game anymore. It's like he was just forced to retire due to you know, injuries and stuff. And basically explaining why, you know, Tommy Santarelli, or Santa as he's called, because he likes to send the balls to the North Pole, um, effectively is not potentially going to get into Cooperstown or anything, because while he's very good at the game, he's a smug little you-know-what, okay? So, no one likes him. Like, nobody. Like, he might be one of the best baseball players ever, and you can enjoy watching him, but you would not want to talk to this man, ever. Because he's so smug, and so annoying, and so egotistical, that you just want to punch him in his smug little face. You're like, gosh darn, do I hate you on sheer principle. You're good at your sport, but you're so annoying when you talk about yourself. Ugh. But obviously, you know what the nature of the Sandlot 3 is, the send this character back in time by being hit in the head with a baseball. Because, you know, apparently baseballs are the secrets to time travel, you know? You hit someone hard enough, it sends them back to their childhood. Of course, most people don't realize that happened when they get hit in the head with a baseball, I guess. So they just make the same decisions all over again. But Tommy Santarelli was aware. He wasn't meant to be aware, apparently, but he was. I didn't realize baseballs had mystical powers, but apparently they do. Um... So yeah, the premise here is a bit weird, but basically, you know, he goes back in time and decides to choose, you know, instead of fame and glory to stick with his friends. So yeah, basically, you go back in time, you know, change his past, you know, and be a good guy this time instead of, you know, a jerk only out for it, out for the money, you know, he's like, it's not enough to have talent, you also have to have a love for the game. So basically, you know, a whole um, rewipe of his character to, you know, standard good guy and all that stuff. So, if there's nothing really original here, you know, it's pretty um, generic and cookie cutter, but at least that's better than the second film, which just made me sit through tons of bad jokes and parodies of much better films like Jurassic Park. Ugh. Doing it again. Jeez. I just want to go on rants about the second film so much. I just can't do that right now, because I've done that previously, but not for long enough. <sighs> There's still a lot of frustration to vent about that one. I'm just glad I didn't watch it tonight. Ugh. But yeah, the third film's just okay-ish. I mean, I got into it near the end a little bit, just because, you know, it's got the usually usual rallying cry of, like, we gotta save the Sandlot. But the only real thing I've noticed is the fact that um the character, that the guy that plays Squints, 
comes back in the third film as an adult. And then you got a lot of um, references and stuff back to the first and second films. Though, just bring up the second films and references irritates me because I'm like, do we really have to make callbacks to the second film? The worst film of the bunch. Can we not just have cut, took all your references from the first film? Like, seriously? Ugh. So you get lines like, um, forever thrown in there about how, um, Santa saved the Sandlot forever. And, you know, when they talk about the Great Bambino, you know, they use all the same old nicknames they used for him in the original Sandlot. Stuff like that. Um, the look of the dugouts obviously lifted from the second film. And there's some other stuff, you know, that from either film there. Um, or they, um, reinforce the fact that Squints now owns the drugstore after he, um, paid for it. And they mention at the end of the first film, you know, when they're talking about what happened to all the guys after they, um, left the Sandlot and whatnot. So in this, in the third film, he actually owns it, and he gives out team t-shirts, you know, for the Sandlot team. Because they're going to be in a Little League tournament with Squints, um, Drugstore, or whatever on it. Like, okay, that's a cool callback, I suppose. At least you guys actually went back and watched it to know what he did after he left the Sandlot and stuff like that, right? At least that was something. <laughs> And there's at one point in the film where he's talking with Ben, he talks about how many kids he's, he's already had, he's up to four, so he's still got five more to go, okay? <laughs> but at least some of that stuff is a nice nod, and it's a throwback to nostalgia, so at least the film has something you can coast on a little bit, and some of the spots, you know, where you like want to think about some of the plot holes. Until next time, then. See ya. Plan. We're always happy. Lots of living here. This half a lot of pain. See you like this. Okay, try it again. DP, give me a target. Yeah. <laughs>